Well, welcome back everyone to uh, our second half of our introduction session of Grassroots Prayer School. I'm Bob, this is my beautiful wife. Mary. <laughs> and we, there is a team of people that we're part of, Northumberland Prayer Net, that are putting this on uh, for us for this um, school today. And it's been a delight to uh, go through the first half of the session on uh, which you can view on a separate uh, uh, video on Our Father. Yeah. And now we're going to look at the, the, the Our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be, be your name. name. So it's hallowed be your name uh, for this next um, session, this, this second half of the introduction. So mm. um, I'm going to uh, pass on now to, to Jane, who's going to go from here. Good morning. There's a wonderful book on prayer by Peter Gregg, and he talks about four steps. And actually this morning, unintentionally really, we've actually are covering the first two steps. And we've just heard in the first hour about pausing. And we've been pausing and remembering that God is God and that he's our father in heaven. And we've been thinking about his different names to give us a greater appreciation of who he is. And now we're looking further at the names and characteristics of God in our Hallowed Be Thy Name session. We are rejoicing in God because he wants us to enjoy him. We are contemplating the greatness of him and the world he has made. And we do that most easily through worship and adoration. And what I've been discovering really is that worship and prayer are inextricably linked. Mm -hmm. That worship invites a response from our heart and our spirit and enables us to come into the intimacy and presence of God. So we are going to listen to a worship song Waymaker, and we're going to meditate on the words. What I'd love you to do is just to relax and enjoy and let your heart and spirit respond to them. Joey. You are here, moving in the midst. I worship you. Yeah. 
Thank you for that wonderful worship song, Waymaker. The response of worship really, um, hallowed be thy name. Um, the name of God is really talking about our nature, it's ident the identity, who he is, the multifaceted nature of God is all there. Talk about the name of God. And we've already had... Um, uh, 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 an unpacking of that really that it's it, it, it comes with a way forward for our lives you know that uh, god isn't just there saying whoa look at this amazing person who i am with all these wonderful things that we can awe and wonder at about this god he isn't um showing us these things like some wonderful exhibition from afar you know um he is here to engage with us and connect with us through his name and so when we say hallowed be his name we are really engaging with the god who has chosen to engage with us there is no circumstance in our lives no place in our lives where god is absent where god's name god's nature his identity can't address the situations that we're in. And I love that. Psalm 139, uh, verse 7 to 10, is a lovely passage that I'm just going to read out now. Um, I had this as a, a very real experience. Um, where can I go from your spirit? Psalm 139, verse 7. Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me, your right hand will hold me fast. And I had an amazing experience of this um, uh, a long time ago now. We, uh, I was um, actually on the island of Tahiti um, in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. And the Christians there actually called those, those the islands at the end of the earth. And the sense of um, being at the furthest extent from anywhere. And you look out in, and of course it's just surrounded by blue sea. And uh, I, I felt God say to me, you know, Bob, you can go anywhere, but you can't run away from my presence. And I am with you wherever you go. So it was a very real experience for me to find myself on a small island in the middle of the Pacific Ocean when God, um, sensing that God was reinforcing those words to me, that he's with me um, and I cannot flee from his presence. So there's a great bigness about God. Um, you know, he, uh, he uh, in Job chapter 38 and Job chapter 39, uh, we're invited to just be amazed at how God has made everything, the stars in the sky and the, the, the wonders of the natural world. You know, the, the, he, he framed all these uh, wonderful frameworks in day one and day two and day three of creation in Genesis one. And then in the remaining days, he fills them with all the wonder of, of creatures. So he, he, he has given us this amazing um, place to roam around in and to enjoy. And so there's this great bigness about his name. So when we look at the natural world, we look up at the skies and, and the stars in the sky, and we can think about the bigness of God, but then realize that his name is, in, is permeating through it all, that he is enfolding us actually in himself, in his nature. So um, we're not alone in a cold, empty universe. We're actually... Uh, with our God, embraced by him and his name, uh, whether we're on the island of Tahiti or whether we're in outer space, we cannot run away from his name and his embrace of us. So Jane, um, in the, the opening um, of the our time together in Hallowed Be Thy Name, this second half of the session today, the introduction session, uh, talked about that response in worship, to adore God, to hallow who he is, to set him apart, 
as uh, our God, the one that we worship and adore forever. So I'm going to hand over now to, to Mary, who's got some things to say. All right. Yeah, we're going to kind of slow down the, the pace again and just um, come before, before God. And we, I want you to think about that particular phrase, hallowed be your name. Um, you might like to, you might prefer to think of it as holy is your name, because the word hallowed is not a word that we use that often, apart from in the, the Lord's Prayer. But there is, I, I quite like it myself, because there is a wonderful feeling of not just recognising God is holy, but the response in us to, to the fact that he's holy. When you hallow um, God, it, it feels like you're, you're responding to that holiness in some way from your inner being. And so that's how I'd like us to feel during this two minutes. We're going to have a time of two minutes. And at the beginning of the time, I'm going to say the phrase, hallowed be your name. And in the middle, I will repeat it. And at the end, I will say it again so that you know that we finished. And I'm going to use this quiet sand timer so you don't get any bleeps. <laughs> So you can, um, I'd like you to feel relaxed to, you can turn off your video, don't turn off your audio, but turn off your video if you'd like to feel on your own with God for these two minutes. And um, something else I needed to say. Yeah, just, just focus on the phrase and um, God may highlight one word to you or you can choose one word to particularly focus on or two words um one or two words just to focus on out of the four <laughs> so it's, this is really detail i love detail so so this is god getting you just to focus down on one word from this phrase hallowed be your name or two words and and another thing i do to help me is to i open my hands sometimes when I'm doing this kind of meditating and it just helps me to give myself so that I'm expecting God to speak to me so I'm open I'm kind of giving him access so that's another way we can we can draw near to God so we're going and after after this time we're going to go into breakout rooms just to share for a short time so if you want to just settle down now and <laughs> turn off your video, that's great. And then we'll begin. <coughs> Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name.
hallowed be your name. So I'll call us, call us back now, if you can put your videos on again. And then we'll be going into the breakout rooms. We'll go into rooms with, I think, three, three people, hopefully. And um, I'd just like you to share anything you felt God speaking to you or um, any, any um, things that you, you felt yourself that you were thinking and pondering over during that time. What was God doing in your heart? And there's time to share with one another, encourage one another, and maybe even time to pray for one another as well. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're going to go into breakout rooms now. Okay. I yeah, think. Yeah. Ready? Yes. For about, <coughs> for about 10 minutes. Yeah. So Bob's just asked me to pray the same prayer I just prayed in the breakout room with ours. So I'll do that now. So. Father God, we we just thank you for for all that you've been saying to us, and I just pray for everyone here that Holy Spirit, you will prompt us during during the day just to stop and pause and spend a minute or a couple of minutes with you, just being in your presence. And we thank you for how you allow us to come into your presence and. Father, we, I pray that, that we will find you in that, in that time, that you will draw us and we will, you will find, we will find you in the middle of our day, that that pause, Holy Spirit, allowing you to refresh us and to fill us and, and just to remember that you are not only an awesome God, but you are also our Abba, our Daddy, who loves us very much in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Over to you, Francis. Right. Hi. So, um, yeah, just brilliant. That time was great. Thank you, everybody. And um, for those of you who are here and those of you who may be watching, we've been thinking a lot about the names of God. So I'm going to start sharing screen and put up some images of... Um, Oh, uh, remove that and this. Um, hopefully you, you can see, I don't think I can get it any bigger, um, but hopefully the background isn't distracting too much. So um, it's just so that we've got those names in front of us. And I just want us to look at them and spend a few moments. And as we did with Hallowed Be Thy Name, just be listening and asking the Lord if there's something on there, there's a name there that he wants to speak to us about today. And, and that is just speaking to where we are and who he is for us in this moment, in whatever's going on in our lives. And just, so if we just take a moment to um, just maybe a minute to have a look at these and just think if one of them is, um, speaking to us So thinking about that name that the Lord's just um, given us, if we could just think, why is it speaking to us right now? What is so important about that name in our lives right now? So actually, I got two together, which is Emmanuel, faithful and true witness. 
And, you know, just to sort of give you, give you an idea, for me, it was because at the moment that that is what I am experiencing, God as Emmanuel with me in absolutely everything, whatever's going on. Um, I'm just aware of him so close to me. And that's not always the case, but it is at this time. Um, and I'm going to meditate on what the faithful and true witness part of that is that, um, you know, but but that's what I'm experiencing is just God with me through Emmanuel, God with me at all times. So we've had quite a few breakout rooms and it's absolutely great. And we learn as we encourage and we bless one another. But actually, at this point, what we're going to do is we're just going to think on this name and pray on this name and ask God for deeper revelation on our own for about five minutes, which could be really quite a long time. So um, as part of that, what um, I'm going to do is I'm going to put on some instrumental music that may help you. But please, if it doesn't, feel free to mute the music and turn off the video. <laughs> if that helps you better connect with what God's saying to you, then please feel free to do that. OK, so we've got about five minutes now where we're going to do that. So and this is the instrumental music coming up now. Can you see it? Mm. Yeah. Thank you. 
So thank you for that, just hope that that just gave you time to think and soak and really connect with our loving Heavenly Father. Yes. And just think of him who is our God and creator. Mm. Thank you. Over to you, Bob. Thank, thank you, Francis, for that time. That was lovely. <laughs> really, um, so good. We're really combining the practical and uh, teaching elements here together and just getting into prayer and closeness with the Lord today. I'm really loving this time. And uh, uh, we're, we're wanting to give the Grassroots Prayer School a regional focus and uh, a sense of, of missional you know, we are where we are. Um, we may think we were born here or moved to this area of uh, where, wherever we're living um, for a reason, um, you know, like jobs or whatever. But in fact, the Lord has positioned each one of us very carefully in place. Um, it doesn't come out very much with the parable of the sower where you have the Lord scattering <laughs> seed everywhere. But um, at the same time, we, can, we know that the Lord, in a very detailed, focused way, takes each of us as a little seed and puts us into position. <clears throat> so I'm very conscious that across our area, uh, we have some amazing um, landmarks, significant landmarks in the landscape. And I like to see the landscape like a spiritual landscape with the Holy Spirit whooshing around in it. And um, the, the prayers of the saints through the generations that are still hanging there um, and, and fulfilling and unfolding something of God's will and purpose so that we may, we may uh, look out the window and just see uh, some houses or cars in the street or some, in our case, there could even be the odd sheep in a field. Uh, <laughs> but the, it, the, the reality is there is, with, with our eyes open in, in, the, in the spirit and our ears open to listen to the Lord, there is a a bigger way, a richness in the landscape to pull on. And one of the significant landmarks that I'm going to use right now as a sort of way of declaration 
of something prophetic um, to declare out over us who live in this region. But if we don't live in the Northeast, in Northumberland and Tyneside, um, I, I, I'm going to give this to you as a gift from the Northeast. And it's the island called Holy Island, uh, sometimes called Lindisfarne, off the coast, that was a, a mission base, uh, a place set apart, hallowed by, by uh, people for God's purposes. And so that's why we picked it under this theme, Hallowed Be Your Name, because Holy Island um, was chosen as a place from which the gospel would go, go out. And the people of, of this area got converted to Christianity, but also from this area, um, they, they, they went into the, all the different little kingdoms that were around at the time. Um, we're talking about a period of time, actually, when Holy Island became Holy Island, set apart for <clears throat> God's purposes, back in AD 635, would you believe? So we're talking 1,300 <laughs> years ago. Now, that is a lot of spiritual landscape. If you think about what the Holy Spirit has been mm. doing for mm. 1,300 years, the prayers that have gone up for 1,300 years, the work of the Spirit in this area, and it is reflected in what is going on right now. We may not understand it, but it is there. So we're going to use the fact that God has positioned this island, Holy Island, off the coast of Northumberland, as a significant landmark to declare hallowed be your name. So um, in particular, I wanted to hone in on, on the Lindisfarne Gospels, which are now in the British Library, but you can actually see a copy of them if you go to Holy Island yeah. Lindisfarne. And I'm just gonna share the screen and just show you a page from there. So we've got the start of Mark's Gospel, and it doesn't look as if there's any writing there, does it? This is the, the page at the start of Mark's Gospel, and this is what I, I love about the Lindisfarne Gospels. They're called illuminated Gospels because um, they've been lit up with God's beauty in all these wonderful, carefully drawn illustrations. And there's Mark sitting there writing his Gospel with the symbol of Mark's gospel, the lion, and what a good symbol that is um, uh, on there as well. <clears throat> and so with these illuminated gospels, I felt that there was something to say here about, uh, they were written in honour of God. There was care and attention to detail. They were an object of beauty, magnifying his brilliance on paper. So taking the idea of the Lindisfarne Gospels being illuminated Gospels and that passage from 2 Corinthians 3 verse 3 where it says Paul writes uh, that we are letters from Christ written not with ink but with the spirit of the living God um, written on tablets of human hearts so we have all become illuminated words of life that God has written across our hearts his words of life. Proverbs 3, verse 3, talks about writing love and faithfulness on the tablets of our hearts. So as we're walking around in our spiritual landscape called Northumberland and Tyneside <clears throat> and County Durham or wherever you are living, <clears throat> as a declaration from the Lord today, I want to tell you that he has written on your heart, love and faithfulness. He has said um, to you, I have set you apart as a holy island, as a Lindisfarne, on the move. Holy island in physical geography is off the coast of Northumberland and you can only get to it on a causeway when the tide's in, you know, out and you can walk across or you can drive across. But holy island called you and me, we are walking around with the words of life um, dedicated to him. And so that is my prayer today, that we will be an illuminated gospel of life to the people we meet, that we will be lit up. We will be a 
display of glory, a display of beauty, a display of God's purity. Um, so quite a lot to think about from that prophetic declaration, because mm. I, we're now going to speak out these words as well to, that I've just kind of encapsulated there and on, the, on this sheet here. So I don't know if you're ready for this, and um, we're, we're going to be a bit muted, I hope, otherwise we are going to be a bit of a cacophony as we say these, but no matter, if we are a cacophony, so be it. So um, if you can follow with me, I'm going to say them out fairly slowly, but say them out with meaning, having understood that we are God's holy island, each one of us, um, words of life, walking about his spiritual mm. landscape showing his love, showing his faithfulness. So are we ready? Let's say these words together as a declaration from him. Lord, we are a place set apart, a place that you have hallowed, where your word is proclaimed and honoured. May we magnify your brilliance and be lit up by your beauty. May, May your words of life, life written all over us, over us declare yeah, your love, your love and, and faithfulness, faithfulness to others. To others. Amen. 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 Well, praise the Lord. We have got some homework, would you believe? It is called a prayer <laughs> school. So um, we're, we're in school mode slightly. And I'm just going to pass over to my darling wife. So yes. tell us what the homework is. Yes. So the homework, following on from what Bob has just said, um, the homework is actually all about how um, your home, the relationships with one another connected with your home, i.e. your family and your immediate neighbours. So it's, it's a practical homework in terms of, you starting to think why God well how God has positioned you where you are in your home and maybe how your home itself can be a blessing a practical blessing to others around um, your family but also to neighbors and those around <clears throat> um, so for example um, hospitality you might be thinking about or you might be thinking about um, how your garden could be used as we use our have a prayer garden um, where people can come and just be quiet um, but there's different ways your home might be used but also to pray about those relationships with family we've been talking about our father in heaven and it's it's good to keep connecting with family sometimes we lose touch with members of our family and uh, we have a big family so we have to make sure that we remember to ring uh, keep up the contact and don't miss out one of our seven children because <laughs> <Seven laughs> they're all they're not all they're not at home with us anymore apart from, well one has just come back but <laughs> um, that's another story yeah so so keeping up good connections praying for your family and for your home to be used but also those neighbors so do you know the names of your immediate neighbors the people next to you the people opposite you people around you if you're in a village you, it might be easier or it might not I don't know sometimes in cities it, you can feel very anonymous but but this is your homework to focus your thinking on your home how it can be used, how to bless your neighbours around you, how to bless and keep connecting with your family and to pray for all those areas. And one prayer to help you is a well-known prayer because there's been a lovely song about it. Number six, verses 24 to 26 is the blessing prayer. What's the reference again? Numbers, the book of Numbers, chapter six, verses 24 to 26 and it's the Lord bless you and keep you the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace 
So you could pray out that prayer for your neighbours, for your family and for your home to be a place of blessing to other people. That's your homework. That's a big homework then. <laughs> I, I suggest that when we finish the prayer school today, that that might be something immediately just to speak out that that blessing prayer mm. over your family and mm. your neighbours so that yeah. you you will have um, got on with the homework yeah. and not left it till the last minute. Yeah. And, um, and try uh, and do that connecting, you know, that as being those uh, holy islands <laughs> walking around in your neighbourhood and in your family. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, um, we are going to hand over to our lovely friend Joan Gladders now um, to um, just give her closing thoughts really about about the the uh, both sessions that we've had today. The introductory session has had two halves, hasn't it? Our Father who art in heaven, and then the second half, Hallowed be your name. Um, so we're, we're going to ask Joan to get, give us some closing thoughts from the prayer school sessions today. And uh, just to say as well, that we are intending to uh, have two more sessions uh, this year, 2021, um, later on in the autumn, um, the covering the rest of the Lord's Prayer, but also going into some other um, significant landmarks that to declare a prophetic word from uh, around our region and some other homeworks as well, uh, in which we can uh, get to grips missionally in prayer for the area around us. Um, so I hope this has been uh, an interesting time on the Grassroots Prayer School. And uh, we, you are very welcome to join us live um, in the autumn uh, if you've been watching these as recordings uh, during the rest of this time. Uh, so over to you, Joan. Oh. You need to unmute, Joan. you good yes um just just to say thank you to everybody who has joined this morning and for those who will be um joining in the future when this goes online um getting down to basics and to grassroots which is what grassroots is about is getting back to basic and just thank you to everybody who has put a significant part into this. And I trust everyone who has enjoyed, has joined in, will have been encouraged. As, um, what has come out of this? I think we've learned through what Sandra shared about the names of God. His names are just without measure. We can't even count them all or appreciate all of them all of them, but he wants us, as we've shared in our groups, mm -hmm. to understand specific names so that these names are written on our hearts. They become part of us. Mm -hmm. And we can do this by spending time in his presence. Um, part of our aim is that God would help us to become more intimate with him to know him who he is. And I think what stood out in what Faye shared was from Romans 8. He is not just almighty God, but he is Abba. He is our father who wants us to have a good relationship, intimate relationship. Um, if I can add, not just that we go to him and ask him for things, but that we, he can pour his love into us and he can pour, we can pour out our love to him through developing that close, intimate relationship with him. And we, it's one of our features is to encourage us, to encourage each other. And this is part of our breakup rooms. So that I hope that if you're watching this, um, in the future, then when it comes to these breakout rooms, you will, if you're on your own or in your family, perhaps you would be able to spend just some time quietly with God on before you move on 
to the next session. Because God delights when we spend time with him. He really does delight in this. And our second session, we moved on to um, the second part of the Lord's Prayer. Hallowed be your name. And um, I think what has come out to us is that, that Jane shared that we, we need to be people not just praying but worshiping because worship is a part is a is prayer and god really blesses when we link together worship and pray and just enjoy him enjoy enjoy his goodness there is so much has come out of this this morning um so many scriptures, so many thoughts, so many um, new understandings. But we come this morning thanking God for being with us. Thank you for Mary's practical encouragements. Thank you for the pictures that we've had. Thank you for speaking to us about our area. That was fantastic, um, Bob, about the, um, the picture of Holy Island and just the recognition that God has been at work for 1,300 years in our area. And thank you, Mary, for giving us homework. That's the point of learning, isn't it, that we put it into practice. So I just pray God will bless us where we are in our homes today where you are in your homes when you're working through this and that we will see God's kingdom being enhanced as more and more of us have a deep appreciation that you are our father and that you are our holy God set apart to be your witnesses in this day and age. Thank you, Father. Amen. Thank you, Joan, and thank you for everybody who's joined us on the call and uh, that blessing prayer for each one of us from the Lord. He delights, he has great pleasure in us drawing close to him. Mm. And I hope you can join us on the two further sessions that we're going to have um, of this grassroots prayer school later on in the autumn 2021, as I mentioned earlier. I also want to say that if you are on Facebook, you can... Uh, join a group called Northumberland Prayer Net and uh, we'd love you to to do that and then you'll be uh, getting some information on there and also there is a, a WhatsApp group as well um, for Northumberland Prayer that uh, we can we can add you to and you can get prayer uh, information if you want to pray particularly for this region of Northumberland and Tyneside. Um, you will need to um, contact me with your, your uh, phone numbers for me to add you on that WhatsApp group. Um, so if you would like to do that, then uh, either direct message me um, or um, I'll just give out my email now so that you can contact me about that if you'd like to be on the WhatsApp Northumberland prayer group. So my email is Bob Bain, B-O-B-B-A-I-N, at hotmail.co.uk. Um, so uh, a, a thanks to Welcome Network, a thanks to As One Northeast for uh, sponsoring this time. And uh, it's definitely 12 o'clock because the <laughs> Mary's alarm has gone off. <laughs> Thank you, darling. <laughs> so God bless everybody on this call and, uh, Amen. and uh, this first introductory session. And we trust it's been a, a good opportunity for us to, to be stirred up to yeah. pray more. Yeah, God bless definitely. you. Bye-bye then. Amen. Bye. Bye.